Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for being here. There are just some things you need to do, you know? And I'm up here because I need to be. And Sam, he's beside me because he needs to be. And he's giving me the daily motivation through our companionship, talks, visits, and the Raptors games. He's been as wise as he's been kind. And last week he said, you know, Mom, you always hear that you don't know what you got until it's gone. But we always knew. We knew we were loved. There are four wonderful people that we are honoring, loving, and grieving today. And we need to be here together, somehow together. And those four people are Chris, Bradley, Adelaide, and Joseph Trainer. We can go through some days thinking that, hey, it's me, there's someone else over there, and that things are not really connected. And we don't think that we affect much of what is happening all around us. I first want to thank you for dispelling that myth. I have been blessed and moved so deeply by all that you have shared. Family, friends, neighbors, and complete strangers sharing their memories with me. And now I'd like to take a few minutes to share some memories with you. Chris was social, adventurous, and he loved to make people laugh. But as you can expect after 23 years of marriage, I pretty much heard all of his stories, probably about 23 times or more. But even so, he tried harder than ever to find something that would make me laugh. And once in a while, he did. And boy, did I laugh. And every time he'd say, oh, that was a good one, eh? I just made that up. And we would laugh until we had tears in our eyes. He had a loud, clear, wonderful laugh. And sometimes our little episodes brought all the kids up from the four corners of the house. But we could never explain why we were laughing so hard. Yes, he certainly loved to make people laugh. Bradley almost always had a smile on his face, but we never gauged his emotions and mood by the look on his face. We could figure out him out by his groans. He had a leave me alone groan. Uh. And I can't believe I missed it groan. <laughs> and this is the best thing in the world groan. And a don't you dare wake me up groan. <laughs> he had a groan for everything. And as a family, we were going to compile and publish a Bradley's Groan Manual for the people in his life. Bradley was kind, honest, and loving. And you only had to look at his face and the way he interacted with anyone to see that. If I had to describe Adelaide, it would be that she was a firecracker and a flower wrapped up into one. Just recently, we'd been a force going to the gym together. One day she asked me if I would like to try a Reba, which is a little like Zumba. I thought about it, and I realized that I may be one of the worst dancers in the world, but I told her that I would give it a try. So we trotted off to a Reba, and it was confirmed that I was not a very good dancer. And Adelaide said to me, you're trying too hard, Mom. You just have to enjoy the music. And the second time that she wanted to go to Reba, I couldn't go. So she went with, uh, Sam went with her, and they came back smiling from ear to ear. Apparently, all the Reba ladies got a big kick out of Sam. And the following week, it was decided that Adelaide, Sam, and I would go to a class together. And there we were in a row, myself, Sam, and Adelaide. Even in this class, I continued to try to follow the steps of the instructors, and I was horribly unsuccessful. And I looked over to Sam and saw a big, I saw a big grin on his face. But he was doing some moves that a mother should never see her son do. <laughs> and then I looked at Adelaide, dancing around the, during the Ariba class. She was so completely out of step, and she had absolutely no rhythm. But she had the most beautiful smile on her face and radiated joy from ear to ear. And she took my breath away. Adelaide was beautiful, smart, and she loved life. And then there's Captain Joe. He was born with a smile on his face, and he never, ever stopped smiling since. And Joey always had his own thing going on, but his superpower was to engage other people in what he was doing. His infectious laugh just made people want to pick him up and make him laugh even more. 
A few weeks ago, we went on a rather impromptu family canoeing trip to Algonquin Park. Bradley wasn't able to go, so it was just Chris, myself, Sam, Adelaide, and Joe. Men were we excited. It was a beautiful day. We canoed like fiends, and it was picture perfect. And then we met the Inca Portage. On the map, it said 2.3K, but when the people we met who had just finished it said it was 3.1. Suffice it to say, the final part of our inbound trip took all the wind out of us. We just wanted to get to the campsite. And then came the rain, then more rain, then more rain. And at one point, the kids came into our tent and said, everything there is wet, not a dry thing in our tent. And I kid you not, the only dry thing I had left was my bathing suit. It rained, it poured, it was deluged the whole next day, and that's when Joy turned to us and said, can't we call the manager? And we asked what we up by that, and he replied, well, we should be able to call the manager so they can get the helicopter and get us out of here. Complain as he might, Joey was always the one who encouraged me to keep going through the roughest parts of all those portages. It's been a week, and we have all been in many places. We've been in dark places, devastated places, places of loss, and even places of happiness. We have all done so far what we've needed to do to get from one day to the next, and sometimes that seems like an impossible task, and on occasion it is. We have all lost something here, and I dare say that it is different for every one of us, but in the end, it is a deep, affecting, and sometimes all-encompassing loss. And what do we do with that? Sam and I have had so many conversations about this. How do we move forward? How on earth can we move forward? What comes next? And the list goes on. What I can tell you is this. My beautiful Chris, Bradley, Adelaide, and Joey were taken too soon, too violently, and without warning. We have to acknowledge that. In no way, shape, or form can I believe that good will come out of this tragedy. It can't, and I won't accept it. But what I have to take with me is that light that I have found from all of you. You have given me a lens into my family's lives that I didn't have, and that is a gift for which I am forever grateful. I am so proud to be Chris's wife. I love him with everything I have. I am so proud to be Bradley's mom. He was one of the kindest spirits to ever walk the face of this earth, and I am so proud to be Adelaide's mom. Her heart was pure as gold, and I'm so proud to be Joey's mom. He was innocent, happy, and he had the biggest dreams of all of us. And my last words to each of them was that I loved them. Through all the thoughts and emotions running through me, I did realize one thing, that the light that has shone on our family in the last week and a half far outweighs the shadows I have felt. And with that, we can move forward. We can move forward without feeling guilty of what we have lost and left behind. So let's have those NBA 2K21 games and stack our teams with the best players ever and think of Joey. Take lots and lots of selfies with the ones we love and change our home screens with those pics all the time like Adley did. Have those backyard barbecues and raise a glass for Bradley. And finally, please go find the best worst dad joke ever and say it in memory of Chris. They would all be honored if you did that for them. I have lost so many parts of me that make me a better person. They were the best of me, but with Sam beside me, and all of you supporting me, I have hoped that those parts of Chris, Bradley, Adelaide, and Joey, those parts that make up the best parts of me, can find their way back in. And so I am deeply grateful for you all, and I send my love.